taken activity steps, you know, we'll channel them a $2,500 grant. You might say that's chump change, but for these businesses at the stage they're at, they can get a hell of a lot of mileage out of $2,500. But that's the, the short answer to your question. Um, we have bigger problems in South Bend because we don't have a, an established CDFI or Community Development Financial Institution in South Bend, so we have to rely on ones in Chicago and Fort Wayne. That creates more difficulties, but we're doing what we can in that space. Well, that's, that's exactly why I'm asking, because uh, I, I'm, I work for a CDFI. So that's why I was you know, wondering, because setting them up for bank financing, if, if they're already, based on the demographic they've talked about, there's already going to be some barriers there. It's okay. not It's not barriers, it's not available. Well, that's one of the barriers, that inability or perception or their lack of understanding of financial literacy, as we talked about before, but I'm talking about other, yeah. as other avenues of financing versus having them to wait two or three years right. to uh, qualify for a bank, only for them to may not even qualify at all. That's why I was asking about something outside of the, as you mentioned, the CDFI, which there are few here already. Yeah, Just so we, 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 we have a relationship with a conduit to CDFIs, and so we, our process reflects their criteria and their uh, processes. Um, and um, for those that we think are ready for, for that. There, again, with a lot of these businesses, there are a lot of ways to get resources without money. And so we first try to embed that in their thinking. You know, the, the irony, the irony for me is, I talked earlier about the obstacles of the person in poverty, the added obstacles that they face, but there's also a power of poverty. If you're poor, you, you're used to setbacks. So you're inherently more resilient. If you're poor and you're not sure you can feed your family this week, you figure out a way to get them fed. And so the, some of the challenge is to take those survival skills from being in poverty and life skills and, and help the entrepreneurs see how to apply that same exact thinking in how they run their businesses. But they get told well, you, you got to go get money, and when you raise the money, then you can buy the equipment, and then you can start the business, follow your business plan, and rather than bootstrapping. And, but your, your point is right. They get to a point where they need money. And, and so, yes, that is part of what we're trying to do in terms of the structure program. Yes, sir. Two questions. The first one's related to that. So I've been a, um, participated in an organization called Kiva for many years, a uh -huh. micro, yeah, micro loan. Either. And you know, I enjoy just make, make, you know, contributing some money every year and, they, and the loans keep being paid and then I re, resend them out again. And is that something that this organization, your organization works with to, to get my micro loans? Yeah, so we have a whole network of those kind of things that we would connect people to. But whether it's Kiva, you know, I, there are a ton of other things. So. These, these entrepreneurs think they're supposed to go spend money on stuff. And so they go buy QuickBooks, right? Well, if you go online and you look up WAVE, W-A-V-E accounting, it's free, it's downloadable, it does everything QuickBooks does. But it's, so it's, it's connecting them to a whole network of those kinds of yeah, the free ones. For the second question is, I, I don't know, Dan or Patrick, I don't really know where the program is in Milwaukee, you know, what stage it's at, how long it's been in place. Were you going to talk about yeah, that? So, yeah, so, I'll, I'll, when Michael's finished, okay. I'll, I'll kind of address that. Any other questions? Any other questions? <clears throat> Happy to, nothing inappropriate. Well, thank you, Professor. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, much. Thank you. So, yeah, you, your first question is probably, hey, how's it going? You know, are the mentors successful? 
uh, with the program in Milwaukee. And we've had two cohorts of uh, 25 each because of uh, the COVID challenges. And we're right around 30 businesses that are, are, are really getting steam, meaning they're cash flow positive, uh, they're working with their mentors. We've got John Florsheim, who was one of the uh, principals behind Florsheim Shoes, working with a lady who has a candle business and they, they've gotten into all four outpost stores. And he's teaching her retail strategies on how to get her candles into more stores. We, uh, we have a person opening a daycare center who's working with Tracy Lubar, who literally, uh, they've now found a space for her in the city. Um, they're getting her license and certified. So these business, there's great stories in Milwaukee about what BizStarts is doing and what the good mentors are doing to move things along. So the first thing you gotta do is commit to us. So after this meeting is over, Lily will send out an email that says, do you agree that you wanna do this mentoring and, and continue to help people in our community? If you say yes, we do have a formal mastermind calls, as she calls it. I love it because it gives the mentors a chance to share what's working. Um, some people use Facebook for marketing and they, they get a lot of success out of it. Some people with our cleaning businesses use door hangers. It says they're in the area and do you want a price to clean your home? And those are very successful and they don't do well on Facebook. The mentors share the successes and then that makes them more successful themselves. Um, Brady's been on, on a few of the calls. He, he's part of the new group of mentors. He was probably the first one in this group. Um, so you can ask him how things are going. I don't think you've met with an entrepreneur yet. You're about to be assigned. So the next thing will be, uh, we'll go through uh, the next cohort, which is uh, starts in September. In October, you'll, if you agree, you'll be paired with a mentee. Um, and the mentor-mentee relationship, I, Michael coined it, but I, I think it's more like speed dating, where sometimes you like the person and then sometimes it doesn't work out. And the case with us is that we give you a chance at a new mentor so or a new mentee. So it's not over if for some reason the arrangement doesn't work out. Um, we work on the financing with WIBIC. We also do Kiva. We also, as part of our program this September, uh, AARP is given, because Michael said the average business starts with $500. Uh, AARP is giving us that $500. So they came to me with an idea for a pitch competition and I said, no, we'll take the $25,000, but I don't, I want to split it up. So they've decided to split it up for us. Um, we'll continue to work with Michael and the other nine cities that are doing this program to try to get better. We'll benchmark with other mentors. Hopefully that'll help you grow your personal network as you're helping. Um, if you have any questions, I want to introduce Lily. Lily actually started as a student consultant and was literally building websites, creating simple flyers and email campaigns for the entrepreneurs that are succeeding. She graduated from Marquette and now is our operations director. So please say hello to Lily. And as I end up here, if there are no further questions, uh, we have to recognize our founder, Dan Steininger, who got this whole ball rolling. And thanks a million, Dan, because of you. And thanks to all of you. It's great to be in a room of people that want to help other people. And uh, hopefully you'll get on the spaceship and we'll go along for the ride. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. Very